Hey kids, welcome back. So glad you're with us today. We're here in our Hope studio, and I'm Mr. Carlos. And these are some of our Hope kids. Say hello, guys. Hi, I'm Ben. Hi, I'm Alex. <laughs> so this whole month has been about a shout out of gratitude and thankfulness. And I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. And I'm sure you kids have plenty to share about what you're thankful for. And thank you for all those who watch us every single week. So please keep liking our videos and smash that subscribe button. And like always, share so we can reach more kids. Yeah. All right. We're in our last week of our shout out series. We saw the Apostle Paul started a new church in Thessalonica and then sending Timothy to encourage the believers that God was with them. Then we saw a huge dancing celebration with David and his army returning the Ark of the Covenant to Israel. And finally, the, the Samaritan that Jesus healed of leprosy, being the only of 10 healed to return and say thank you. So what have we discovered, kids? To be grateful for everything God has done. <laughs> and that lines right up with our bottom line for this week. Say it with me, kids. Make, Make a habit of, of being, being grateful. grateful. Awesome, guys, thank you. So our virtue this month has been on gratitude. Let's do it together. Gratitude is letting others know how they helped you. And there's no better way to show God gratitude than worship. So it's time to jump off our seats and on our feet. It's time to dance and sing.
Forever I am changed. Yeah, that was awesome, guys. All right, let's cool down, sit back down and relax, and let's learn how to remember to be grateful for our greatest gift. It is time for the story before the story. Today we're in the book of Exodus and the book of First Corinthians. In the beginning, God created an amazing world, but people forgot God and turned away. The world was broken. God chose one family, the Israelites, and promised to bless the entire world through them. But God's people were enslaved in the land of Egypt for hundreds of years. The people cried out to God, and God saved them. But it's so easy to forget the amazing things God has done. So God told the people to hold a celebration each year. They would eat a special meal to help them remember how God saved them. And though the Israelites did forget again and again, they still came back to that special meal. And that is where our story starts. Hello friends, more than a thousand years ago, after God led the people out of Egypt, Jewish people were still celebrating. That special meal, the Passover, in fact, the night before Jesus gave up his life, he ate the Passover meal with his closest friends. Take this and eat it. Now, each time the Jewish people ate the Passover meal, it reminded them of how they had been forced to work in Egypt. Then God sent Moses to face down Pharaoh and demanded freedom for the Israelites. Let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to let the Israelites go but then changed his mind and each time God sent a plague and a terrible warning so Pharaoh would release the Israelites. These were frogs, flies, hail, darkness, and more. Finally, God sent the tenth and most terrible plague of all. That art says every oldest son in Egypt will die. It was a terrible day, but God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Go at once. Each family must kill a Passover lamb. Put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame. The Lord won't let the destroying angel enter your homes. The Israelites did just as God had told them. After a heartbreaking night, the Israelites were saved. At last, Pharaoh ordered them to leave. Get out of here! Go! The Israelites packed them so quickly that they didn't even have time to bake their bread. It didn't even rise. So they baked flatbread without yeast. Yummy, crunchy. <laughs> then God led them out of Egypt to freedom. And God told the people, always remember this day. You and your children, after you must celebrate this day as a feast to honor the Lord. So as God instructed, the Israelites made a habit of celebrating Passover with a meal that included lamb and flatbread with no yeast, like the bread they had taken on their journey out of Egypt. Bless are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe. Jesus himself grew up celebrating the Passover every single year. But when he shared the Passover with his friends the night before he died, Jesus did something different. He gave a brand new meaning to the Passover meal. The Apostle Paul wrote about that evening years later in this letter to the Corinthians. On the night the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread and when he was given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body. It is given to you every time you eat it. Do it in memory of me. The bread was a reminder of how the very next day Jesus would give himself up and allow himself to be killed for us. Paul continued. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. The drink was a reminder of how Jesus would allow his own blood to be spilled so that we could live. Because of Jesus, we don't have to try to prove to God that we're good enough. All we have to do is believe that Jesus came to rescue us and choose to follow him. Jesus took that old habit of gratitude Passover and turn it into a brand new habit of gratitude, the Lord's Supper or communion. The Passover meal was a celebration of how God had rescued the Israelites from slavery. Now the Lord's Supper is a celebration of how God has made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death through the life and the death and resurrection of Jesus. And for the last 2,000 years, people have been celebrating what Jesus did for us by eating bread and drinking wine or juice together. Some churches do it every Sunday or every month. Others might do it a few times a year. They use different kinds of bread, or wafers, or wine, or grape juice. But in every case, the habit is the same. It's a beautiful change to remember together the amazing way that God has rescued us and how God has given us so much. 
we can always be thankful. The end. You know it's super easy to think all these Bible stories are kind of random, but no way. It's all connected in such an incredible way. First, God made a plan to save one family, the Israelites. And from that family, God made a plan to save anybody who follows Jesus. That's right. And God gave us a special way to remember. So what's our part in the story? Well, just like the Israelites, we can form a habit of gratitude. One of the easiest ways to start is with mealtime. Like when we thank God for our food. Your family might already have that habit. If not, you can start it. You can always take a few moments and thank God for your food even if you're eating on your own or at school. It doesn't have to be out loud. You can connect habits of gratitude to other parts of your day too. Like when you wake up, you can thank God for a brand new day. Or when your parents help you at home. And at night before you go to bed, take time to think back on your day. Maybe your mom made your favorite dinner. Or just the amazing fact that your heart is beating and your lungs are taking in air. All because God makes it happen. So we can make a habit of thanking God in the morning, at mealtime, at school, and at bedtime. You got it, guys. And that's an awesome thing about habits, is that they actually rewire our brains. So that if you start with one time and focus on being thankful every day, in about three weeks, your brain will remind you automatically. <laughs> our brains are awesome. Make, make it a, a habit, habit of being, being grateful. What I love about this Bible story is that God's greatest gift is His Son, Jesus. And God gave his son so we could be with God in heaven forever. And to remember what Jesus did for us. He asked us to remember him in communion, or also called the Lord's Last Supper. All right, kids, it's time for prayer. So let's gather those hands. God, thank you for keeping your promises and for always being with us. And thank you for sending us Jesus to be our friend forever. Help us show our gratefulness to those around us. And we thank you for everything you've already done and everything you will do. Amen. Have a blessed week, kids. Bye. <laughs>